we had the F MI5, which is the British version of the FBI and the FBI, come together and warn of China's immense threat, quote unquote. Okay, so Ken McCollum and Christopher Ray, so Christopher Ray's the FBI head, and Ken McCollum is the MI5 head. They came together in a speech and made an unprecedented, they say, joint appearance. And so, what did they say? They said that China was, quote, the biggest long term security threat to our economic and national, biggest long term threat to our economic and national security, and had interfered in politics, including recent elections. So, China is being Russia gated, predictably, because this has been happening, but Russia gate was, of course, a much bigger story in the United States. So MI5 head Ken McCollum said his service had more than doubled its work against Chinese activity in the last three years and would be doubling it again. So more investment in the spooks. MI5 is now running seven times as many investigations related to activities of the Chinese Communist Party compared to 2018, he added. So it sounds like the UK's version of the China Initiative, which I talked about here on this channel as being a McCarthyist program. The FBI's Ray warned that if China was to forcibly take Taiwan, it would, quote, represent one of the most horrific business disruptions the world has ever seen, end quote. Well, that's just facts. It's just facts that if China had to intervene in Taiwan, which would mean that the United States has intervened in Taiwan because China has said over and over and over and over again it's for a peaceful resolution. But if, if China felt like it had to intervene in Taiwan in any way, that's because there was an independence move facilitated by the United States. And yes, it would cause a huge business disruption. That's for sure. So spokesperson Jia Li Zhan said British intelligence was trying to hype the China threat theory. And he advised the head of the MI5 to cast away imagined demons. I love it. He said the FBI director had also been playing up the China threat to smear and attack China, revealing a Cold War mentality and urged him to stop making irresponsible remarks. I don't see anything unreasonable there. So McCollum said the challenge posed by the Chinese Communist Party was game-changing, while Ray called it immense and breathtaking. So do you see this? This is all hyperbole. There's no factual basis here. They're not telling you anything other than, ooh, China, boogeyman, ooh, China, boogeyman, ooh, don't, don't forget to worry about China as your political situation is unraveling at home. So Ray warned, uh, the audience, which included chief executives of businesses and senior figures from universities, that the Chinese government was set on stealing your technology using a range of tools. He said it posed an even more serious threat to Western businesses than even many sophisticated business people realized. He cited cases in which people linked to Chinese companies out in rural America have been digging up genetically mollified seeds, which would have cost them billions of dollars and nearly a decade to develop themselves. He said China deployed cyber espionage to cheat and steal on a massive scale with a hacking program larger than that of every other country combined. So here is just more and more hyperbole. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but China is in effect the big threat. That's what the MI5 and FBI had to say yesterday. That's what they were taking our eyes off of. And so this comes off the heels of October 2021. You may remember that the Central Intelligence Agency made a similar statement. Uh, you may know that the former ambassador um, to Russia, U.S. ambassador to Russia, is now the head of the CIA, William Burns. And what did he say in October of 2021? The CIA is reorganizing to place a new focus on China, and it's opening two mission centers. So this is a pattern, right? This is a pattern. There's a pattern of these spooks spending more resources on China in order to prepare themselves and be at the forefront of this new Cold War. And William Burns said that the new center is going to strengthen our collective work on the most important geopolitical threat we face in the 21st century. The most important geopolitical threat we face in the 21st century, an increasingly adversarial Chinese government. So there you have it. In October 2021, the CIA was already on this. They were already on this. And I think one of the reasons why the MI5 and, this, and the FBI feel like they need to do this is because there is a little bit of a crack in this new Cold War on China. For one, you have this immense focus on Russia because of the special military operation. It's been unprecedented. And there's been a lot of pleading to China. Hey, China, please 
please, can you get your boy? Can you help us out? Can you can you tell Russia to stop doing what it's doing because we're shooting ourselves in the foot the way we're reacting? And, you know, it's all uh, – and even though we've been so aggressive toward you and we've basically been maligning you and attacking you and militarily encircling you and sanctioning you, please, 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 China, help us out here. So there's been a contradiction there in that – the United States has taken such a hostile posture toward China, so has all of its allies, yet they feel like they need China in some way to help contain Russia. It's this classic wedge theory, which has been going on arguably since the end of the Cold War, but especially since the rise of Vladimir Putin and, of course, then Xi Jinping in China. Since these two leaders have emerged and have helped shift, not completely and entirely themselves, but have been catalysts and have helped shift and facilitate the political compass in a different direction, well, now there is a little bit of a crack here. It's not all unity and roses and a good time among the elite in the West when it comes to this hostile posture toward China. Just like a lot of these corporations are trying not to pull out of Russia too quickly, the new Cold War on China has been relatively ineffective when it comes to investment, foreign direct investment, China's foreign direct investment, even from the United States, has been relatively high despite sanctions on Huawei, despite the targeted sanctions or so-called targeted sanctions, but the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act, which is all about banning products made from Xinjiang. Still, there's been still a good number of investment happening in China and recently there was a letter penned in the, world, in, in the Wall Street Journal, which I think has a lot to do with the FBI and the MI5 kind of lecturing the business community, lecturing capital, the capitalists, trying to get them on their side entirely. Because get this, listen, to, look at this. The Wall Street Journal published this the day before the MI5 made this, or the day of, right? This was the day of. This was an opinion article signed by many corporations. You'll see. We want to rebuild U.S. relations with China. Maurice Greenberg. So this is a short article. And in the article, it's basically a plea to the U.S. government to do something different. Stop with all of the hostility. Stop with the new Cold War. And here you have, oh, what happened here? Oh, okay. It's back. So in the letter, you have them saying the deteriorating state. Oh, geez, what is going on? This is this website. Anyway, the deteriorating state of affairs between the U.S. and China has destabilized the most important bilateral relationship in the world. Many Chinese companies do business in the United States, as do American companies in China across all sectors. Hundreds of billions of dollars in goods and services are exchanged annually that present tremendous benefits to both economies. We should build on that. It is in our national interest now more than ever to do all we can to improve U.S.-China relations. My company was founded, founded by Cornelius Van Saar, an American businessman in Shanghai more than 100 years ago. I understand that opposing viewpoints make attempts to establish a constructive dialogue difficult, but given what is at stake, it only makes sense to try. Business leaders from both countries can achieve positive outcomes despite their differences. Recognizing this, we have established a small group of senior business and policy leaders who have experience in China and share the view that we'd be better served by having a more constructive relationship with China. We are confident that like-minded people in China would embrace the opportunity to work together and find solutions. Our new group will help foster a measured but frank exchange between the U.S. and Chinese government on mutual issues of concern. The U.S. and China have a long history of collaboration dating to back before, before World War II. When the People's Republic of China reopened to the world, the U.S. extended favorable trade terms to foster China's economic growth, becoming one of China's biggest trading partners, which we continue into today. Until recent years, bilateral channels allowed for government-to-government -government interaction on many levels, as well as opportunity for business, policy, and academic leaders from both countries to meet and exchange ideas. After these channels were eliminated during the Trump administration, our differences increased, as did the level of mistrust. I was encouraged to hear Secretary of State Antony Blinken say in his first major speech on U.S.-China relations that the Biden administration stands ready to increase direct communication with Beijing. That will require not only a willingness from the Chinese and a genuine commitment to proceed in good faith, but also resurrection of the bilateral mechanisms of exchange that existed for decades. Our new group aims to help rebuild those channels and reestablish a constructive bilateral dialogue based on mutual respect and understanding. 
So here you have these business, U.S.-China Business Council, former U.S. Ambassador to China, William Cohen, former Secretary of Defense, uh, former President and CEO of the U.S. Chamber of Co Commerce, Tom Donahue. You have pretty big names. Look at this, co-founder of the Home Depot, Inc., usually seen as this big right-wing company. Carla Hills, former U.S. Trade Representative, Joe Lieberman, former U.S. Senator, you have the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations, Stephen Orleans. So you have Frank Townsend, Francis Townsend, former Homeland Security Advisor. You have some division there. I mean, that's a big deal. As much as we can't trust capital to rebuild these relations, we have to understand that that's a big deal for these corporate, you know, these corporate executives and their mouthpieces to come out in the Wall Street Journal and really publish a letter saying, we want this to, to ease a bit. I think the writing is on the wall, especially with the economic recession, that this these tensions, this buildup toward war, economic and military warfare toward China is not going to benefit them. And it's not going to hurt China in the way that I think capital thought it would. And so now there is an attempt here. And I think that's why you have this exchange. Now we have to be told that it's China that is the big thief, right? The big thief uh, when it comes to uh, uh, espionage and economic uh, uh, warfare, etc. Um, so anyway, let's continue, okay? Um, keep liking the stream. Keep hitting that subscription button if you're new to the channel. And of course, the best way to support this work and keep it sustainable is patreon.com slash Danny Haifong. Patreon.com slash Danny Haifong. I'm $55 away from my goal, $60 away per month. So please do subscribe, help support this work. But I'm going to now shift to one, it's talking about the hypocrisy of these accusations right in the last half hour the hypocrisy of these allegations because that's all they are the fbi and the mi5 are just making allegations they haven't provided any evidence they never have they're promoting mike pompeo like talking points we heard it from his mouth the trump administration's mouth first the cyber espionage the stealing of patents and ideas and all of this stuff it completely runs counter to reality. And first, just to the point, I want to share just how hypocritical this is. One, just the allegation specifically. And I don't know if you remember this, but WikiLeaks actually um, revealed and China's largest tech security firm, Chihu 360, exposed how the U.S. is very hypocritical on this issue. And so this was the first thing I could find. This was released in May of 2020 uh, during the pandemic. But it talks about how the CIA had for 11 years been interfering in China's affairs through cyber espionage and attacks. And so we're going to talk about this, and then we're going to talk about how the United States how the FBI and the MI5 have been terrorizing leftists has been the real threat to any kind of social progress by targeting movements for decades, okay? And that's where we'll end. But just really quickly, in 2020, it was revealed that China's largest security firm, all they did was go over WikiLeaks documents where they investigated what was called Vault 7, which WikiLeaks dumped, they, they dumped all this information about this cyber weapon that it exposed a CIA operated APT hacking group codenamed APT C 39 using Vault 7 against China. It tracked down Joseph Adam Schultz, a former CIA employee who was charged by federal prosecutors with leaking classified materials as the man deeply involved in this program. According to the report, APT C 39 group had been engaged in cyber infiltration and attacks targeting Chinese. China's critical sectors for 11 years, including the space and aviation industry, scientific and research institutions, oil industry, internet companies, and government agencies. 
It is no surprise that China has been long a victim of cyber attacks. This report revealed how the massive and deep CI operations are attacking China, having gathered China's critical personal, commercial, and government data for, and information which has seriously undermined China's national security. So that's from WikiLeaks. I mean, they were looking at the WikiLeaks dump of the Vault 7. That's what they were doing. The U.S. intelligence community has developed a vast and sophisticated network using the most advanced cyber technologies to acquire information around the world, making it an undeniable empire of hackers. From the WikiLeaks revelation to Edward Snowden's case, the U.S. has been in the limelight of cyber espionage attacks. The recent crypto AG scandal revealed the CIA had inserted an encryption backdoor in cryptographic equipment after it acquired the Swiss company in 1950s, which enabled the CIA to spy on over 120 countries for decades. The Chio 360 report serves as another piece of evidence. According to cyber expert uh, Pierluigi Pagnani, Chio 360's findings are consistent with the analysis of other cybersecurity forms, firms such as Kaspersky and Symantec, which also tracked CIA hackers. But the U.S. is able to walk away from these scandals largely unscathed. In fact, it is so proud of its cyber espionage activities that Secretary of State, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, once proclaimed, I was a CIA director. We lied. We cheated. We stole. So there you have it. They, the United States is doing this. We lied. We cheated. We stole. That's what, that's what they're doing. And yet they're calling China the threat. China is the threat. I mean, it's absolutely incredible how much fear mongering goes on about China and how China is always an escape valve for what actually is happening, a projection of what actually is happening within the realm of the U.S. empire in the Western empire's actual political situation.